Hello, trading friends, and welcome back to Forex Focus brought to you by IG. It's mid-March, and that means that CPI inflation rates are here, and they are moving markets. Once again, inflation higher than expected. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but we're seeing it bear out in U.S. dollar and especially in U.S. interest rate markets as uh, yields are moving higher as well as uh, the potential for interest rate cuts moving out in time. A lot of stuff moving uh, here post-March CPI inflation reading for February's inflation. Uh, and let's get to that inflation reading as the CPI inflation rate came out higher than expected, both headline and core inflation. Um, and we will get the secondary uh, reading from PCE in a couple of weeks. But this is, again, a higher inflation reading than expected. It might not look like much, especially looking at that core piece, um, as year-over-year -year inflation did move lower uh, than the previous core inflation reading um, there last month. But both uh, headline and core inflation expected um, to be 0.1% lower than where they came in. And again, that might not even seem like 0.1%, uh, Frank, uh, how meaningful is that? Well, when it comes to a market that's dissecting whether or not the Fed will cut in March or May or June or potentially even later here in 2024, um, and they're dissecting that in terms of is Fed Chair Powell cool with 2.9% inflation, 2.8% inflation, or does he want 2% even inflation? And we're still seeing uh, in terms of CPI, both headline and core inflation in the three handle, it's very meaningful um, that it's not moving down and to the right the way that uh, everybody was hoping or expecting. And you're seeing this uh, across a, a slew of markets, but especially in the U.S. dollar and interest rate uh, asset classes. We'll get to interest rates in just a second. Um, but the knee-jerk reaction here was back and forth for dollar. And then you see the sustained bid um, here looking at dollar yen. And, and remember that um, dollar's been beat up the last week or so, and this dollar yen market got down below 147 and then off of this CPI number, rallying back close to 148 um, and still up pretty significantly on the day. And, and we'll see if the bounce back continues as yen and British pound, some of the biggest gainers uh, relative to US dollar in the last week or so. Uh, some of the biggest losers after this CPI inflation number and uh, taking a look at the pound piece and, and widening out the lens a little bit. The, it, it seems to see uh, these these other major pairs like pound and yen seem to see these levels of resistance or dollar sees some support uh, around some of these big levels like 130 and uh, the pound got up to 131 briefly in 2023, but essentially for the last year, um, hasn't been able to meaningfully eclipse 130 um, and has traded down to as far as around 120 in the last year of trading, uh, but all the way down below 110 going back to 2022. Um, and so the question becomes again, is this the highest that the pound or yen or Australian dollar, euro, uh, these major foreign currencies uh, are able to appreciate against uh, U.S. dollar, um, or w will they finally see a little bit of breakout? Um, th the question continues to be in the long term is since the, the pandemic and the U.S. dollar strength that we saw in 2021 and 2022, um, is this U.S. dollar environment relative to these other major payer partners, is this a new normal? Is 130 kind of the upside um, for the foreseeable future, or will there be a larger reversion? Will this pound finally get back to its pre-pandemic uh, normalcy of 
140, 150. Uh, historically, obviously, it's been much higher than this range of essentially 110 to 130. Um, and same for those other major pairs. We'll see. But yeah, right now at that inflection point, once again, uh, dollar has been weak in uh, recent weeks here. Um, but now getting some strength off this inflation number once again. And a lot of this is owing to the middleman, so to speak, which is interest rates in here. Because if inflation is higher than expected, uh, then interest rates in the U.S. might stay higher for longer than expected. Um, everybody watching the Fed to see if and when they'll cut uh, interest rates here in 2024, if, if it will happen. Um, and the U.S. dollar getting a lot of strength from the stronger U.S. Uh, rates coming off of this high inflation number. And looking here at the 10-year, you could see a pretty significant bounce uh, as the dollar was seeing weakness the last couple of weeks. Uh, no surprise that U.S. interest rates were falling in this 10-year, got down to close to 4% again before bouncing back uh, now to well above 4%. And you look at uh, shorter-term interest rates in the U.S., two, five-year uh, interest rates, those are back to 4.5% right there in that range. And then you go all the way, the shortest term, um, looking at overnight rates that the Fed sets, uh, especially going into the March meeting, which they're unlikely to change rates at. But the May and June meetings where um, there's still a relatively significant chance that they cut interest rates at uh, one or both of these meetings. And, and now after this inflation number, these likelihoods uh, of cuts are, are kind of slipping away, especially there in May. Um, now down to 17% chance of a cut in May. And, and we still haven't gotten to that March uh, uh, Fed meeting where, again, they're unlikely to change rates, but man, the, they're already starting to price out uh, the chance of a rate cut in May, the next meeting afterwards. In June, um, this is down to a 67% chance, which you might say, hey, Frank, that's better than 50%. Um, that's pretty darn significant. Um, th this was 10 to 20 percentage points higher than where it currently is over the course of the last month. And, and so the likelihood there starting to slip still more than 50 percent chance that rates are lower by that June meeting. Um, but uh, that those chances are lower than they have been in recent trade coming off of this higher inflation reading. So a lot of stuff in flux. We'll see if this trend continues. Obviously, huge data points coming from the U.S. in the near term with uh, we've got GDP, PCE, a lot of stuff here in March, as well as the FOMC meeting where, yeah, they're unlikely to change rates, but we're likely to get a lot of context as to how the May and June meetings might go. And U.S. dollar obviously will uh, move off of that. Thanks for watching.